looking at different IMO4 samples and their chemical and physical and biological properties and how they affect plants on a one-time application. A part of my project was, did not include doing this. I just, uh, I've been using this machine with Dr. Jason Adolph out of the Marine Science Department over at UH for several years, uh, taking pictures of plant diseases and um, nematodes and really cool things, and I wanted to apply it to my graduate thesis. Turns out that whole graduate thesis thing takes like a really long time, and it's really difficult, and it didn't leave me a lot of time for this. Uh, or funding. <laughs> And UH said, hey, why don't you just come on in, and I know you know how to run the machine, we'll come in and get you situated, and I was able to take pictures over the course of about four days, and so it was all donated through UH, thank you very much, and this is not cheap. <laughs> so uh, we got some great images, I'm going to be, um, of course, uh, releasing all these photos and everything with uh, my thesis presentation, and then they'll be available to the public afterwards, so I don't for them um, after presentation, okay? Because I'll catalog all the pictures and have them all laid for you. And actually have a uh, undergraduate who's looking to get credit to colorize them. So I might be able to have them with a uh, wonderful program that's actually meant for scanning electron microscope colorization. Uh, and it was written by Washington State University. It's a great program. So we're just going to go ahead and add color to these. And these are a uh, little bit raw. And uh, they haven't been put through Photoshop yet, which will give them a really nice polished uh, look to them as opposed to the grainy look that you see today. Um, you'll see on a couple of the dates that I actually took most of all these this last week. So, all right, um, yeah, let's get started. I got a lot of photos and basically I just, if you guys want to um, just tell me when to stop, I can just stop and stop looking at these and move on to something else. But right now, uh, what we're looking at here, of course, uh, is the parent material of IMO4. Does everybody understand what I'm saying about parent material? That's what the material is mainly consisting of. And that's, uh, in most cases, going to be a carbohydrate source. And in this experiment, we use the traditional methods of using um, mill run and uh, those and rice and that kind of thing. That was the methodology we used for this. Um, so this is actually mill run. Magnified is the wall and the cave of Milrun, <laughs> magnified um, tremendously. And on the inside, these are going to be, um, what does this look like, folks? Fungus. Ah, wrong, but good guess. <laughs> yeah, that's actinomycin. That's actually a bacteria that behaves and looks like a fungus. Um, but it's, it's uh, very prevalent in the um, IMOs that I saw throughout all the different samples. Uh, it has antibiotic and antifungal properties, so it's a great competitor, and it also is a plant beneficial microbe. Uh, Actinomycin. Feel free to Google it. Don't look at Wikipedia. It'll lie to you. <laughs> and I don't want to get that parent material confused with this guy, which looks an awful lot like a clump of the parent material, which is actually, this is going to be a bacteria. It's one of the forms of bacteria that we're going to see. Um, but it, it looks scaly and it looks layered just like that parent material. So with an educated eye, you can, we can find them uh, and pick them out. And so I just want to give you an introduction of what we're looking at before we dive in. Uh, of course, we have our bacteria and fungi and hyphae, and we'll look at that in a second. This is the first sample that I took. Uh, this was created at 100 feet elevation, uh, this IMO4 sample, and this was on a macadamia nut farm, and it had very little um, outside material. Like when you mix IMO for it, sometimes you get leaves and soil from the outside environment. This is actually pretty well protected. So most of the material that you see in here is that, um, is that mill run. The mill run magnified, uh, a lot of times will look like this, and you'll see this scaly kind of construction of the cells. And what that is is actually that's the hull uh, the wheat hull, and that's elongated plant cells that you're seeing right here. These are brick, 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 basically building blocks. The inside of the hull of the eye of the uh, mill run. Okay, and of course microorganisms all over. And we'll just go a little bit deeper. 
So we're going into the grooves, and of course we're going to see now all of these little dots that are all up on the inside, those are all going to be bacteria, yeah? So at 50 microns, this is going to be, all right, how, to give people the best perspective on what we're looking at, okay? I like to think of it as a bacteria is a car, okay? The size of a car. And 50 microns is about 25 stories. So this is about, if you're like standing over something, you're about 25 stories up, and that's about the dimensions of a car, a human being being about that size. So we're still way far away from these bacteria, yeah? So this is covering a whole lot of surface area, and that's the key to having microorganisms in any compost is surface area. So as we go deeper and deeper and deeper, you find that um, they exist in pretty much every nook and cranny. If it looks like it's chewed on or eroded out, that's basically what it is. And um, you tend to have in the IMO uh, a finished set of microorganisms. So, um, yeah, so microorganisms on the inside are going to be typically anywhere between 0.5 nanometers and 5 nanometers. So the largest ones would be about 5 nanometers, the smallest ones, um, just a fraction of that size. And we're looking at 30 nanometers here. It's a distance away. Here's a nice uh, piece of parent material. And this was actually at... Uh, 500 feet elevation, which was at a lava flow and construction site with a little bit of Ohia growth. Um, and this, so this is a wonderful piece of uh, IMO at 400 nanometers, so we're really far away, about you know, 200 stories up, like out of an airplane over this thing at this point. We're going to take a look really close, and I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit of branching in there, right in that area. You can zoom in. And that's what we were looking at earlier. That's the actinomycid. That's going to be the bacteria that behaves like a fungus. And it's very unique. And it is a plant beneficial microorganism. Now, a lot of people that I've shown this to already are like, where's all the microorganisms? Yeah? That's an issue I'm having with the uh, analysis. Um, the ones at the lower elevations have much lower populations than the ones at the medium and higher elevations at about 1,500 to 2,000, 2,500 feet, which is opposite of what my thesis and hypothesis was, and what all the literature tells you. But hey, you know, it's a specific parent material. So we're actually, it turns out, getting a specific set of microorganisms. So these actinomycetes right here, they behave like fungi. And each one of these is a bacterial cell. Sorry, I got a point here. Each one of these is a bacter uh, bacterial cell. And uh, they behave a branch out like this. And that's at 10 nanometers, right? So now I can tell that, how can I tell this is not a fungi, and, but a bacteria? 10 nanometers, I would say, oh, this thing's about that big. Oh, it's about one of those. It's about one nanometer across, I'd say. And that's bacterial size. How big is a fungi? Well, bacteria are cars. Fungi are eight-lane highways. They are massively wide, and I'll show you in, in later pictures. And it's a great way to be able to identify as their size. Here's off to the side. We went off to the right of that large piece. We're going to take a look at this uh, nice cluster right here. And of course, we have high feet. There's the highway I was telling you about. There's a the high feet, and then of course, we're going to a cluster of bacteria. We're kind of focusing on that to start with. A nice colony here. Can't identify it by the picture, um, but uh, we are, of course, uh, the same samples went out to go get analyzed um, to find out what the specific DNA script of all the microorganisms in these samples are. So we'll find out one day. Uh, but this is a great uh, cluster colony trying to get some sort of nutrient source that's on the side. A little focus issue, but once we get it through um, Photoshop, it'll clean it up. Some hyphae, guys. This is a great sample right here at 100 nanometers, and here's a nice cluster of hyphae. So that's um, much wider, much bigger than, than bacteria. 
Nice colony of high feed. This is gonna be at uh, this is at a thousand feet elevation. This sample that I was taking. Um, a lot of fungi in the higher elevations. I would think that there would be a lot less fungi because the pH of IMO samples that I've taken is about 8.1 on average. It's basic, surprisingly. Fungi love acidic conditions. I'm wondering what's the relationship. Great highways going all over the place, crisscrossing beneath. Going a little bit closer, it's just layer upon layer upon layer upon layer, going deeper and deeper. Right here we got a fungal, fungal spore, which is about the size of a house. If you think about this being the highway, it's about the size of a house. And of course we got our bacteria in the back there. I shouldn't be reaching up like that to the right. If you guys saw me last month, I had shoulder surgery in December. Um, right here we got bacteria. And this is gonna be the uh, fungal spore, and look what I was able to catch. High feet coming out of the fungal spore. <coughs> Great texture on it. It's a good uh, giveaway to find out what it is, is the texture. Um, usually the bacteria doesn't have that type of a bumpy texture. It's pretty common in the spores. It allows for attachment. <coughs> Another couple layers here. Layer upon layer, going deeper and deeper. Bacteria all up in here. I see this wonderful picture of me. Piece of wood. This is at 1,500 feet elevation. They have been munching on this wood and causing it to do wonderful things. Um, for the last, so these samples were about two and a half months old. I'm wondering what a fresh sample looks like over there. It's like, it's like pulled right out of the field. Um, so we're hoping to be able to try that. More high feed, lots of erosion, lots of high feed, bacteria clustering over there. So you guys understand these relationships are, are symbiotic, they coexist. They are bunched together, jam packed together, doing wonderful things, creating enzymes, uh, breaking down materials to release new nutrients so that the other organisms could then break down those remaining nutrients to do something more simpler. And the goal is really to break down all of that pair of material to a simple form that plants can take up. That's really the goal of all of this. Actinomycetes in Here's a great one. What's that? Water. Huh? It's like underwater, yeah. Check this out. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I showed that to Jason, and he's just like, I have no idea. Algae? Don't think so? Don't know. Don't know yet. What's the, what's the date on this? I took that on the fourth, so I haven't had a lot of time to research it. But wonderful um, structures there. Tubular structures. It's like coral or something. Are these, um, you know, um, do these release gases on the side? What are the functions of these hulls? Is it to gather and pick up stuff? I don't know. But I do see, what's that? Bacteria stuck to the top. And you can see that they, you know, Maybe that's the goal. Maybe that thing pulls nutrients off of a piece of bacteria. I don't know. I love the wonderful question. 300 nanometers. This is at uh, Jeep's place at uh, 2,000 feet. We're getting up to the colder temperatures, a lot more rain, a lot more bacteria, but also at the same time, a lot more fungi. Um, this is at 300 nanometers, so it's still pretty high. Looking down on a skyscraper on this structure below. And we start looking at, what is this? This is not so much parent material. This is something else that got picked up along the way. When I made this, I made it in a group of trees, and I, I produced it out on his yard. <coughs> and so it picked up all kinds of grasses and plant materials, and that's what I was finding a lot more of uh, in the higher 
in the higher elevations that these um, kind of indigenous materials have, a, have an effect on the IMO where you're going to get a lot more bacteria and a lot more fungi if you have incorporate some kind of local ferns and pieces of soil from, from the environment. Um, I don't have, the data doesn't necessarily say that, but from observation, that's what I think. I don't make too many hard claims. <laughs> Bacteria latent all over everything that's from the, the local environment. A little bit closer. Nice little nub coming off there. Bacteria going crazy on the parent material, getting all kinds of nutrients from that. And the goal really is, once again, break down this heavy material. Bacteria on bacteria action here. And go a little bit further away again. This is one of the cool structures I found, uh, what, just the other day on the 6th? Um, straight out of a movie. <laughs> so we got wood, right? Lots of hyphae. Bacteria all over the place. This is from Gene's place. This is at 2,000 feet, higher elevation. Um, and we'll zoom in a little bit closer to this structure right here. So you got hyphae strewn everywhere. And these are going to be like the runner hyphae's into the ones that are initiating uh, the growth. And then um, bacteria all about. And I'm wondering, what is this thing? It's straight out of little shop of horse. Um, it's... It's some sort of pod or plant pod. See, at 40 nanometers across, this could be some sort of seed coat, very, very small seed coat uh, that has been chewed and eroded, and, and the bacteria are going crazy with whatever is left on the inside. Nice pile of the same bacteria. 30 nanometers, yeah? So this is going to be these are pretty large. These are pushing the boundaries of those largest bacteria. Easy to photograph. <coughs> All kinds of contours, a lot of stick to move. Um, and, and I don't know if anyone's aware about how this process works. None of these uh, bacteria or fungi are alive. What I had to do is take a fresh sample. I had to put it on a metal plate. I had to make that metal plate a certain charge, and then I took gold ions in a wonderful machine and put one atom or two atoms of gold all over each sample. It's on a very, very small sample. And so what it does is it allows the camera to project and reflect. It's the gold um, is a great uh, additive to the image. And I was fortunate enough to have UH to be able to donate gold ions as a start. Um, but with that, we're able to get all those contours, and uh, unfortunately, these probably wouldn't be so wrinkly. Uh, they might have dried out a little bit getting sprayed with gold ions, but uh, it's still a great image, yeah. So plant material, plant material, rodent material, and then you got hyphae on the inside. Everybody see the bacteria right there? little bacteria, little car on the highway, right? And they use, there's bacteria right there. They use these to get around, yeah? So if they're mobile, they use a water layer to be able to uh, make an enzyme to allow them to scoot around, and they use these as highways to get around. Of course, they don't go very far, but they do use them to get around. Hyphae, mixed in with that bacteria I showed you in the beginning that looks a lot like the parent material. You can see the clusters of them. They almost look like sea slugs. Tiny little sea slugs. I get a close up picture. Oops, I'm touching the wrong machine. There you go. Like a sea slug, right? It's got the same contoured bumps on the back. And if you start looking at them and watching them like I've been doing, they uh, they uh, they start to look. They have the same patterns. You can start identifying them. I'll wrap it up here in a second. Mycelial mats. And uh, this is what I wanted to show. Uh, just got the protozoa. Here. It's alive, guys, but at the same time, 
a lot of the images are showing me a lot of the same microorganisms as far as structure goes. Um, so it's interesting now to make these observations and put some data down. So hopefully the data will come together real soon. And please come to my presentation of the data, which should be sometime in the middle of spring. Um, I'm hoping April at this point. But every, every month it gets just to move back. I have to finish by the end of the semester, so hey, we'll, we'll get it done. But either way, um, I'll let everyone know, and hopefully we can get some of this presentation and actually see the full amount of data. And then I was told I can come and, and do a short presentation. Okay. Any questions? Okay, on your sampling, <coughs> did you go watch during the line, say like from Hilo Bay and go all the way up Mauna Kea, or was it yep. all random? Yeah, it's basically through Anaco Road, took me all the way up. So we went up to 25 on the beat. Um, The most microbes you found was what elevation? Uh, it was actually uh, in Keith's place at, at yeah, the 2000 feet. 2000 feet. Yeah. But it really, it's you know, it has a lot to do with where the samples came from. What did I sample? Where did I pull from? I pulled from this environment, which is drier. I pulled from that. I pulled from Gino's place, which rains all the time. And it's not recently. <laughs> yeah. But it, it has that certain, those certain characteristics. So it's, it's you can't. Don't make any conclusions about what you've seen or heard so far from me today. That's all I have to say. Just enjoy the pictures and just know that I've seen certain things and I hope to be able to get that information to make sense. Right? Any questions? What do you intend to do with all that identification you get to make on the individual fungus? I'm sorry, what? What do you guys intend to do with the information you guys get on identifying the different fungus? Uh, the identification, I don't have my foot in that. I just donated the sample, some samples. Um, you have to talk to Mike about that. Uh, I hope he gives the information to me. <laughs> Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee, right. Any other questions? Thanks for letting me talk, folks. Thank you.